NZ Blood is stockpiling plasma from recovered COVID-19 patients so it can be used in international clinical trials or more widely if it's proven to be effective as a treatment. This week, the US Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency order for the use of so-called convalescent COVID plasma in hospitalised patients, saying the known and potential benefits of the product outweigh the risks. Convalescent plasma contains antibodies from the infection someone has recently recovered from, and it's been used before against SARS, the flu and other viruses. Chief Medical Officer for NZ Blood, Dr Sarah Morley, explains exactly what the service is collecting and from whom. Convalescent plasma um, is plasma that's collected from someone, usually after an infection. Uh, it's usually collected within the first two to three months after infection, and it picks up from the bloodstream the plasma, which is the yellow liquid part of blood that suspends the blood cells. And in that plasma are antibodies. And um, so those are proteins that are, spe- can, uh, are a specific response to the virus or the infection uh, that went before. And those can be transferred by transfusion back into a new recipient to help their immune response. So this explains your interest in people who have had uh, COVID-19. Who qualifies to give plasma donations of those patients? So it, we, we have um, been in contact with COVID patients who had had COVID that was proven um, by a positive swab sample and the individuals need to have fully recovered and fully recovered at least 28 days before we take uh, any plasma that could be used to treat another individual. But the other thing is, obviously, they go through all of the routine health checks and blood tests that we take for any blood donor to make sure that that that, um, plasma product is completely safe. Have you called all of the people in the country who've had COVID asking if they would like to participate in the programme? No, we haven't. So we um, we decided um, that we would initially, because we, we started to collect plasma as the outbreak had started to decrease in New Zealand um, last time, at the, during the last lockdown. So we, have de- we decided that we would contact donors that were previously blood donors uh, and who had tested positive because they know the routines, we know that they're comfortable with blood donation. So those were the initial contacts that we made. If we find in future that we need more donors, then we will make a wider range of of contacts to pick up uh, more individuals who could help us. So how how much of this plasma do you have, the COVID-related stuff? So right now we have about 20 doses, which would on average treat around 10 patients. Uh, We aren't holding a large stock, partly because we haven't had demand yet, but we can bring back the same donors to top up those stocks very quickly and also we're in a position to um, contact more donors and collect a lot more very quickly. So we would expect to be able to step that up if it was needed. So has any of it been used and how does it get used and who decides if it gets used? Yes, at the moment we haven't had any formal requests. How we've set up our program is that clinicians who want to use um, COVID convalescent plasma as part of one of the several clinical trials that are running to look at treatments for COVID um, can have access to um, the plasma in that setting. But we, we would also allow access outside of the trial after clinical consultation with the intensive care or other doctors looking after patients uh, between, our, uh, uh, between ourselves and, and them to make sure that we felt that patient was likely to benefit. Generally speaking, who gets it? Is it for very sick patients with coronavirus? Well, that's an interesting question because there's still a lot we don't know about the value and the, and the timing of treatment for COVID patients with plasma. So the trials dif- differ a little bit in when they uh, would include it. For most cases, I would think that the usual approach would come when a patient was deteriorating and looked likely to need intensive care and that it would be given early in an intensive care course 
uh, for patients who seemed to still be deteriorating. But there is a trial going on in the United States which is looking at whether convalescent plasma could work much earlier than that. So patients who are early in their course of COVID or people who've had contact. So, for instance, if you were someone who might be a vulnerable person and you were known to have had a family contact with COVID. So all of those things are still under investigation. Uh, and that information and that, those information and ideas will evolve over time, I think. So how many clinical trials are there here exactly? So I'm not aware of any clinical trials that have been specifically designed solely in New Zealand. But there are a number of trials. Uh, There are two from Australia, one from the UK, that are recruiting patients from different intensive care units across the world. And we know that some of our intensive care units in New Zealand want to be in a position to join those trials if they need to. So at the moment, Doctor, do those international trials or or any international organisation organisation like hospital, I mean, can they ask you for some of this? Yes, they can. And we would be expecting that the request would come from the doctors at the hospital treating the patients. If that hospital is enrolled in a trial, then they will be following the protocols of the trial that they are enrolled with. Um, Otherwise, they will have a conversation with us um, and talk to us about why they need the plasma and how much they need based on the on the patient's needs. So yes, they are in a position to approach us. So has any of this COVID plasma from New Zealand gone offshore yet? Uh, no, it hasn't. And has it been used in a New Zealand patient in New Zealand yet? No, it hasn't. So we are just storing this just in case. That's right. So we um, started collecting uh, towards the end of the last outbreak, and so none was um, none was requested at the time that we started to collect it. We've retained some to make sure that if we had any further outbreaks, we had enough to treat anyone who might benefit from it. And as I say, if we felt that, that in the future we needed to step up production, we would do so. I'm just curious, how much is how much of this plasma would you use for a treatment? One individual plasma treatment is around 200 mils. And most of the trials and studies that have been done are focusing on giving around 400 mils of plasma to the individual patient. But again, that's an area that's under study. So that's basically like two small glasses of water? Uh, yeah, two, two medium-sized glasses of water, yes, for sure.